Do not adjust your television. What you are about to experience is stranger than fiction. Hey there, strangers. That's our new opening for those hey there, first time joining us. Welcome back to Stranger Than Fiction. I am your co-host, Devin. I'm Heidi. And we are sleepy, which is apropos for this episode. Uh, if you're not familiar with our podcast, we are a duo behind a YouTube channel called Channeling Spirits. Ooh. And we like to cover all sorts of things, supernatural I actually came up with a, a few ideas today that I'm gonna I'm gonna go over later with you. Ooh, but, I'm excited. Um, we cover all sorts of materials on our YouTube channel. Foremost of those is Ghostbusters. I'm a huge ghost head. Heidi is tolerant <laughs> of that. Yes. And not saying that I don't like Ghostbusters, but I'm not obsessed. You don't live and breathe Ghostbusters like no, I do. But like I live and do. breathe paranormal things yeah so. and we like to change it up and talk about you know shows and movies that go over that stuff and then discuss like what inspired those um what maybe is the real story behind some mm -hmm. of those events and for this we wanted to go through debatably is paranormal or supernatural but is definitely a folk character which is mr sandman dream me a dream bring me a dream, That's bring me a dream. no it's dream me a dream bring me no, not the lyrics. Oh. <laughs> it's like, that's definitely the yeah, lyrics. Yeah, I know, the that's, name of the episode. That is the, also the name of the episode. We are doing the Real Ghostbusters Season 1, Episode 7. Ooh. So, fun little episode. One of I, one of my favorites, or definitely a fan favorite. I enjoyed it. I feel like I haven't seen this in a while because I didn't remember some of it. And I was like, this is weird. It's creepy. Like... I never watched that as a kid, and I'm glad I didn't, because I already had effed up nightmares, and that, I, this, the animation creeps me. I don't like oh, it. Oh, it wasn't his voice? Let them call me renegade. I don't care. Did you not like his voice either? I don't even remember what that sounds like. He sounded oh, like yeah. this. Like, like Voldemort-ish. No, Voldemort sounded like him. He, he looked first. like a sperm with well, with a hood on, like a Dementor hood. Uh, we'll, we'll go over that in a second. Yeah, we'll get there. We'll <laughs> get there. But definitely a fan favorite villain. I, I, I think an awesome character that's from folklore, and we'll go a little bit on some of the actual creepy folklore, as well as just kind of, you know, all sorts of things that he is you know technically supposedly had mm -hmm. when you think of sandman do you think of like any specific like <laughs> i do oh so when you say sandman what comes to mind is spider-man 3 oh <laughs> i was like what are you laughing about <laughs> like that the for? actual sandman <laughs> i i guess i meant when you think of the folk character no, sandman not just the name sandman nope, that's what comes to mind and then i think of george in the jungle because that actor stars in that movie oh that's, yeah that's hayden my, thomas church that's yeah. my mind train okay well i i guess to my point being was is kind of like the boogeyman is it's interesting how we don't have a cultural idea of oh you know, when you say the Sandman, we all pop in our heads a similar image, kind of like Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. You know, that Santa Claus has really been refined to a very specific image, whereas Sandman, I think, apparently some people can think of a man made of sand. Uh, <laughs> I, I think I wasn't the... sure what we were going to into, like literally when we were well, watching it. <laughs> OK, that, yeah. But I, I feel like a, I want to and I want to get in a little bit later the idea of a, a dark hooded character. But I don't want to I don't want to jump into that yet. So why don't we actually jump into our first section, which is Heidi's, Heidi's Dissection. Okay, so we watched this a couple days ago, so the the details are a little vague. So I'm I really gonna fill them I'm in. really gonna <laughs> help. All right, so it starts off with a nerd reading a comic, and ouch! Just because you read comics doesn't make you no, a but nerd. He, was, he talked like a nerd. Are you kidding, Marge? Oh. And yeah, he was a nerd. And so he's reading a comic and his wife, girlfriend, sister, who knows? Someone is nagging Some, him. Yeah, so probably a wife as, or a as, girlfriend. You know, it's, it's like, oh, this nerd here doesn't want to hang out with a girl. Yeah, and she's got red hair. 
To which you said, it's you and me. Yeah. (laughs) Thanks. And she wants to go play tennis. And he's like, nah, I'm reading my comic. And she's like, fine, loser. Well, I'm going with or without you. And then she starts to leave, but comes back. Anyway, so through the vents, I think, some type of sleep dust happens. I don't I don't remember how it gets in, but it, yeah. I will say I, I liked the intro because it was a good, it's kind of like in the original Ghostbusters where you don't see the library ghost. You just set, kind of see the fear and reaction mm-hmm. of this force, which I thought was really good as you don't get this immediate like, and there's this weird creature. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, what, what was that about? So there's sleep dust and the, the nerd guy falls asleep and then this monster, which I was like, oh, is this the Sandman? This monster comes and attacks the redhead. And I put he eats the redhead, which is not true because oh. she just ends up sleeping. No. So um, he's yeah, he's reading essentially what's an EC like comic. Like alien. If, well, if you're not familiar in the I think it was the 50s, it started maybe before that there was a comic company called EC Comics and they had a bunch of like horror and um, sci fi that were all very graphic. Mm. And there's a long history of comics that I can get, go into because I'm a comic book nerd, but it's this kind of tentacled horror sci-fi alien. Yes. That, yeah, it's kind of nebulous. Like, I think she screams and they cut away. <clears throat> yeah. I was like, he ate She her. did. <laughs> but nah. Anyway, so this dust essentially makes people sleep and then their dreams come to reality. Which I don't really get. It's fine. But one using incredibly powerful sleep dust. So powerful it makes whatever you dream come to life. But that like that's that is the logic in this story. Yes. Sure. And so the theme of it is like, oh, you can't like control your dream, so the dreams are like running amok, right? Amok. And amok, that's amok. stated. So this phantom figure um shows up once the guys, the Ghostbusters, leave, and you're like, What is this? It's he's like a hooded figure i think you you jumped because then we cut to the guys in the firehouse and isn't it like peter's like sleepy and he's like i don't want to go until i have my breakfast yeah no way winston i'm not going anywhere till i had my breakfast and then like he's about to like have some donuts and then slimer eats all his donuts and they're like oh guess you gotta come peter good for you with the detail boom got it anyway so then the phantom figure shows up after they've left. Was right? this at the firehouse? Yes, it was at the firehouse. Okay. And then they're outside and they're like, what's happening? And then I, a brain with robot arms. That's the monster from the Nerds comic book. That's what I that's wrote. That's the alien. Yes. Yeah. He takes Peter and they explode it? Question mark? You did a terrible job taking notes for this episode. <laughs> um, so what they realize is by using their proton streams... That unlike a ghost where it would like wrangle them, yeah, they they just disintegrate these sleep manifestations. Sleep paralysis. No. Demons. Sure, I guess. Um, So then it goes back to the nerd and redhead sleeping and the monster that exploded was from the comic he was reading. Okay, cool. So they then show the hooded figure and they're like, oh, it's the Sandman. He puts people to sleep and their dreams happen. Which is interesting because the Sandman refers to himself as he is a sandman so yeah there's, so there's an implication multiple. like in fact at one point he says we are legion or, or something similar like we are many oh yes we are many my friend many mm-hmm. uh like hinting that there's like all these sandmen hundreds of us my friend and i have all sorts of questions as far as like Where so the where's sandmen? the council of sandmen who are like <laughs> Hey, Bob over there has just lost his rocker and he just wants to put the world to sleep. He was in charge of the Manhattan district. I don't know what's going on over there. <laughs> we need to shut that down. Like, what? Yeah, what's the Sandman in Brooklyn doing where he's like, dude, like, chill out, like, calm down? But they just let him do this. And they're like, well, I mean, I guess that's how it'll be now. Like, boom. Yeah, so he's running amok, just putting the whole city to sleep, and Stay Puffed appears because there's a little kid who was eating Stay Puffed marshmallows, yeah. and so he was dreaming well, and, of Stay and Puffed, and I was like, what confused. is happening? <laughs> but, and this is this is not so much a theory for you, but think, uh, something I want to put out there, because we've gotten asked a lot on our channel is like, how did, so in Citizen Ghost, which we've gone over, mm-hmm. They defeat Gozer. So Gozer is in the real Ghostbusters universe. Yes. Is defeated because there's marshmallow fluff all over them. Mm-hmm. 
So Stay Puff is defeated, but then magically returns in later episodes. Mm -hmm. Here is my theory, which can be disproven a little bit. Okay. But maybe the Stay Puff we see in the real Ghostbusters is this sleep manifestation that just never went away with Sandman. It's a possibility. But that's the only reason I can justify Stay Puff magically being back because they never explain really him being back. I think he's just like at one point in the containment unit. Oh. I'd have to like go back and see like which episode might be the earliest appearance. But since this was the seventh episode, I, I think there's some precedent that like maybe this is how Stay Puff came well, into the real Ghostbusters. But the problem with that is if you blast him with the proton stream. Yeah. Which he's, they he's did. Just, did they? Yeah. In this episode? Yeah. I'm not going to believe that. Okay. I don't remember that part. Well, anyway, I mean, this- It was a good theory. This Stay Puffed is essentially like a Bogart, if you will. So he's- Bogart? Yeah. So he's not actual. I know. But it also it's doesn't make like any a... sense in the real Ghostbusters. <clears throat> and that was me trying to make sense of a show that doesn't really care about canon. Well, anyway, back to the episode. We now return to the real Ghostbusters. I put that the Sandman looks like a giant sperm head and skinny arms <laughs> with a Dementor coat. <laughs> I think that's pretty fair description. I don't like that description at all. Mm -hmm. Very naughty. And maybe that's why there's there's many there's. Do many you think there's heads. some like less <laughs> they are legion <laughs> looking? <laughs> oh, ew. Anyway, we so... are many sperm head. You are laughing at me, aren't you? And then they're like, hey, it's time for a nap. And Peter's like, sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, he didn't want to do this job in the beginning. He just wanted breakfast. And they dragged him into this. So obviously they're trying to defeat, you know, him like, like by destroying all of the dreams. And he's like, fine, these are all good dreams that you're seeing. Now I will make them all nightmares. Dun, dun, dun. This is your nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> that is a stupid name. If you haven't played Nightmare of the Board Game, you're missing out on life. So yeah, so then the nightmares are attacking the Ghostbusters. Yeah, so like, I think like a knight, literally, like a yeah, knight in like, shining armor yeah. turns into a nightmare. Yes. And something and else. And then there's a scary Easter bunny attacking the Ecto. Yeah. I didn't that, like that. That weird, didn't he have like a giant carrot yes. or a club or something yeah, like so that? Yeah, he was like beating them with the <laughs> carrot. I didn't like it. And he had really sharp teeth. So Ray gets zapped with the sleep dust and dreams of a giant pizza. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, cause like, but it's nightmare I, pizza, so it falls on the Ecto. I, I don't know why the Sandman has to be super secretive about it, but like the engine doesn't work. So like Ray gets, they're like, come on, Ray, go fix the engine. So he like <laughs> opens the hood and like Sandman pops out. He's like, he's like, poof, poof. He's like, got you. I'm like, this is like a reality alt altering demon why does he need to hide in the hood of a car to yeah, blow sand on someone? Fine. Couldn't he just like appear? It's not sand, it's sleep dust. Sleep dust. It's he's the sand man. I wouldn't want sand blowing on him. He gets everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so anyway, and then he next he gets Peter, and Peter dreams of getting all these awards. Yeah, like Oscars yeah, and Tonys just, and, and uh, all the things. Grammys. And no, like the Pulitzer Prize. Like he's just getting every type of every award ever. prize ever. Nobel Peace Prize. And then he gets Egon and Egon dreams of Einstein saying yeah. E equals MC squared over and over and over and over and over. No, he like, he can't quite get to oh, the Oh, he can't he's like finish like, his no, equation. E oh, because equals, it's a nightmare? <laughs> I guess like, yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe that's Egon. Einstein's not smart. It's his nightmare. Egon equals MCQ. Um, and then Winston figures out what to do to save the day. And well, yeah, because like Egon kind of implies like there is a way to defeat the Sandman, yeah, but like... he doesn't get a, like he doesn't get to say what it should be. Mm -hmm. And so like Winston does his fun little oh, his run. run. And he's like, I gotta figure it out. And like and he, Ray Eureka, is like giving him a out. yeah, like like Ray and Egon are popping around in his mind and he's like, What can I do? Anyway, so the solution is to tell yourself while you're dreaming that you're dreaming so you can control the dream. Which is lucid dreaming. Yes. So anyway, he Winston partners with Janine and he's like, All right, Janine, we're gonna battle the Sandman. I need you to, to suit up and suit up. <laughs> I said Janine just bends over and takes it. What? <laughs> Very naughty. 
<laughs> Why did you write these notes? <laughs> because she does. Because the Sandman shows up from behind her. What? And she I turns don't around. This. She turns around. She's just like. Uh oh. Oh no. And then she just kind of like waits for him to do it. Like she had her moment. She had her chance. And she just bends over and takes it. Oh it's no. It's the truth. So then but I think that's part of the plan. And then Winston yeah. I mean Janine needed to she needed to be knocked. Asleep. Yeah. Yeah. And then Winston's like, Oh no, I'm by myself. Ah and Janine dreams of becoming a Ghostbuster. Which is awesome. Yes. And while she is being a ghostbuster she's controlling the dream so she helps defeat him with winston by using the proton yeah packs. so like you can see she's like she's trying to like get through and you're still not sure what the plan is because yeah. winston hadn't revealed like oh no. you need to lucid dream and whatever you dream will manifest and so janine's like i want to be a i want to i'm a I want to be a Ghostbuster. And so, like, her dream I self. be the very best. Her dream self then, like, gets up and grabs the proton pack, and they, they both are able to, you know, Fight wrangle him in. together. The... And Slimer helps out by capturing him in a ghost trap. Yeah. And then everyone wakes up, and Winston's like, all right, now I'm going to go take a nap. Deuces. Which is totally fair. Yeah. The end. And then Egon finally discovers E equals MC squared. It's E equals MC squared. The end. Just 60 years after Einstein had published that. Finn. Finn. So, a fun episode. I agree with you. I don't have a good barometer on, like, how scary or, like, eerie I don't think these it's... episodes are. So eerie. It's the animation above everything that's creepy. Like, of the monsters, they're just disturbing looking. Like, mm-hmm. they're just... Like not like but scary or gory, they just don't. Yeah. <sighs> like for me, like I'm not a good No, for for me, it's like Boogeyman has a terrifying voice. Sam Hain and and the Sandman all have like it's it's kind of a raspy or eerie or creepy voice. The Boogeyman is by far the scariest. Oh yeah, I don't like. But that. the Sandman is just like not even grotesque, just like funky looking mm-hmm. that's what i'm gonna go with he's funky looking so i actually had some questions for you okay so do you want to save these questions or you want to you want to you want me to answer them right now let's do it right now so okay. if you were asleep by the sandman what would you dream of oh gee what here so <laughs> what i i get about this episode is like everybody's dreaming of like things and it's like, oh, like, I'm dreaming of pizza. So a giant pizza falls from the sky. Mm-hmm. My dreams are never like, like, I don't dream of giant bunnies or Stay puff. Rarely. Lies. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. I feel like, I don't know. It would probably be like boring. Like, not like Einstein, but I, I don't know. Because my dreams are usually like, you know, like you're in a, a familiar place. Mm-hmm. That's, but it's not it's like, it. dream it's like distorted like i have a dream disneyland and it's weird yes and yeah. that's what i was gonna say like i have dream versions that you've been and, there multiple times yeah like, yeah same and that's what i find most interesting about dreams is like okay like i recognize that this is my dream high school which i've been to multiple times and and you visit that but what's also weird about dreams is you can fade in between being the actor, but mm-hmm. also the observer. Mm-hmm. Like you can shift where all of a sudden it's it's almost like first person shifting to third person POV where you're like watching people interact. But you also identify like you are one of those characters. Mm-hmm. But then sometimes you become that character or you and like people are sometimes like weird amalgamations. Mm-hmm. So like I think I've been you before. Oh my gosh. <laughs> was I was I jerk dream Devin or was I Probably. Oh. Yeah, and that's the other thing is like oh, yeah, some, we some have, people we like we have like jerk versions of each other in our yeah. dream. So it's like they they don't have any characteristics other than like maybe even not even like physically look like the person but you just know you're like oh that is that's Heidi in yeah. the dream. But you're so like but that doesn't look like follow her. up. I don't do I don't think... have an answer. I I giant pizza. Okay follow-up question do you think that dreams are like a dimension like a window into an alternate reality i think dreams can be a few things i think 
sometimes it's our mind just exercising problems that we haven't solved in our conscious mind. Mm -hmm. That's where, you know, you get like things that sometimes like you, you've been thinking about this all day and then you go to sleep and maybe like it's your brain trying to resolve that, whatever you've been concerned about. I think sometimes it's just your brain playing around and having like fun. Just like, yeah, <laughs> just, yeah like it's just going to fly around or whatever. And then I think there's sometimes when you can enter some sort of psychic world, if you will, where, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's the astral plane, if you want to call it, or, or something elevated beyond our, our humdrum mundane reality and to kind of access a different world. Mm -hmm. So would I call it a different dimension? I would say like it's more of an elevated plane. I like that answer. So do you agree or do you do you think it's more another dimension? In another dimension. Um, that didn't answer my question. No, I think I agree with you. It's like an alternate plane. Yeah, like I, I think it exists kind of in the same space. Just it, it's operating in things. Like a mirror like, dimension. Nope. That's not one. <laughs> no, Doctor Strange. Uh, any other questions? I'm not going to tell or, you what I would dream of. Um, oh. You're an Adam Driver? I, that's literally what I wrote. <laughs> I'm just going to edit that out. <sighs> um, have you ever been able to control a dream? Yes. I was dreaming of Adam Driver and I choke slammed him. No, um... All right, John it, Oliver. It, <laughs> step on my throat, you rude baboon. <laughs> step on my throat, Adam Driver, you rudely large man. <laughs> I hated this. Goodbye. I I have. I, I don't, like, I feel like it more... I feel like it more happens when you're having a bad dream. Mm -hmm. Like, rarely am I having, like... I would say like a neutral dream or like a good dream. And you're like, all of a sudden you're like, I need to control this. But like, I've had it where it's like, I don't like this situation. I'm going to take control and we're going to end this. Huh. Whether it's I'm going to wake up or I'm going to change the situation. I feel like more often it's when I'm, I'm not enjoying the dream or having a nightmare that I want to, I want to control it. Interesting. Do you have the same or? I rarely can control my dreams. Hmm. Sometimes I dream that I'm dreaming. I've had I've like, had the where dream I within think dream, that I'm like inception. I think I'm awake. Or have you from like a woken nightmare, up? But I'm still in a nightmare. Yeah, yeah, yeah literally. Like the, and then the I inception. wake up for real, and I'm like, what? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Those are always always weird. Yeah. So um, I I I'm not a very good lucid dreamer, and it's it's oh, more I would I... say instinctual. But what I do like about having Janine be the lucid dreamer. It builds a little bit of her character. Now, I don't know if she's just kind of BSing, but in the first film, she says, I'm, I'm sort of psychic about this thing. Listen, I'm usually very psychic, and I have a terrible feeling that something awful is going to happen to you. Mm -hmm. And I like, I do like to believe that, like, Ginny may not be super psychic, but there is, like, there's an element she's interested in, like, horoscopes and, and some of that. So, like, being able to lucid dream with her character actually does make sense. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's a, a fun little thing how intentional that was i don't know but i like to think that janine's actually a very good lucid dreamer yeah. it's my head canon like it yeah all right we're gonna move on to our i was gonna say our next section i mean this is just where we we review the episode i don't know why i needed a transition for that but how many bags of sand would you give this <laughs> episode i thought real hard about that one three what i'd give it eight Eight you and a half. You know I'm so... I'm going to give it eight and a half. You know I'm so stingy. I know. You're so so I'm, rough. I'm harsh. Oof. Like sand. What? <laughs> Not going to acknowledge that. What didn't you love about it? Was it? Did you just find it creepy or you thought the story was bad? Like No, what? it was fine. I just didn't really get his motive. He wanted the whole world to sleep to stop war. When I'm finished, the world will sleep for 500 years. No wars, no fighting, peace. Yeah, Even, but, like, then, but then he was in like, fact, insert but then I will right cause nightmares here. that will cause wars. It didn't make sense. I wanted to create a world of dreams, but if it takes nightmares to get rid of you. No, it made no, he it like literally has a lot. Okay, fine. I'm not going to win this one. You have annoyed me. But also, why would he care? 
because people are killing themselves, so that's less people dreaming. I don't know. There's yeah, but then there's there'll be whole, less work for him. There's a whole He's bag still of getting questions. Paid the same. <laughs> but yeah, like what? I mean, then you start getting in the nitty gritty. It's like, okay, well, what, yeah, like who invented the Sandman? Who who Is there organizes a mama Sandman? them? Is there Sand a Sandman woman. union? Sandwoman. How do they procreate? Why do they continue to do this job? You know, I don't know. There's there's a whole lot of sand questions. Well, I guess agree to disagree. Yeah. Fine. Fine. All right, we're going to move on to Behind the Screams. Ah! All right, this episode was written by J. Michael Straczynski. He also wrote a lot of other real Ghostbusters episodes that I love, like Citizen Ghost. We've talked about a little bit before, Mm -hmm. but he got the idea for this episode after hearing the Pat Ballard song, Mr. Sandman, on the radio while at home. Yeah, I mean, I was going to put in like in the background, but yeah, please. Yeah, no, keep singing it. Okay. The address 248 West 16th Street is actually real. Ew, what's there? I looked it up. It's a little hard to tell because what I found, I think on like Zillow or like Redfin, it's a zero bedroom, zero bath condo. Ah, perfect. A basic New York apartment. (laughs) That sold for a million dollars. What? Yeah. I will, Wait, if you're watching the this... No, I'm going to look this up right now. Okay. What's the address? 248 West 16th. It's a real address. Uh, I found it on Zillow. If you're watching this on YouTube, I will put uh, like a photo of the listing. So I'm not exactly sure how many bedrooms and how many baths. I'm not sure. Maybe that wasn't disclosed in the listing or when it was sold. But uh, the last selling I found was for a million dollars. And I believe it was only a few years ago. But it is a, a real a real address, which I found fun. This villain, the Sandman, is actually one of the few villains to address any Ghostbusters by name, and he addresses Winston. Good night, Winston Zedmore. Mm-hmm. The boogeyman in his second appearance actually addressed Egon. Not the episode that we watched, but there's a, another oh. like boogeyman like Strikes Back or something like that where no, he thank you. he talks to Egon or refers to Egon. And we, we talked a little bit of, you know, he is one of many Sandmen, and it reminded me of the Reapers in Supernatural. Mm, if yeah. you remember, like, in the, one of, I think one of the early episodes, we'll get to it, um, they meet a Reaper and realize there are many Reapers. Now, eventually, they realize, or they meet what is, like, the Reaper Prime, the, the death of the universe, but there are a whole lot of Reapers which is an interesting concept, but he, you know, this idea of multiple Sandman, I don't think really has ever been explored in other pop culture because like the Grim Reaper, it's almost always a single figure Mm -hmm. that, that does this supernatural duty of putting all people to sleep and and collecting all souls. But I really think- But he's not collecting their souls. He just wanted to- No, no, I'm I'm saying between Sandman and the Grim Reaper. Oh, yeah. But- I want to talk about the correlation between those two characters. Okay. So that's what I was talking about. Do you think it's interesting that this Sandman is depicted in a black cloak with a pale face? Kind of like death. And I ask that because in a lot of places in history, dream and death are often associated as kind of brothers. Hmm. So in Greek mythology, they they literally were brothers. Hmm. I think it's Morpheus and Thanatos. Hmm. And, you know, so there's that always the kind of like the idea that like dreaming is almost like the prelude to death. You know, it's a death that you wake from. Tell me not to go to sleep tonight. <laughs> well, I do you think it's interesting that there was a character I choice? I think it's very interesting. Uh, do you think that was intentional? I like or... it. Yeah, I think it was actually. Based I, on I, the history, may- I like that. Maybe I'm giving, you know, a little bit more credit, but I, I found that fascinating that the idea of death and dream. Um, one of my favorite comics of all time is the DC Sandman run by Neil Gaiman. And I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. Well, and death is his sister. He also has other siblings like destruction and um, delusion, but they're very close and their death was born right before him. And the fact that, you know, there is that correlation and relationship there. I don't know. I think there's something to be said. Maybe I'm looking a little too far into it, but no, I like it. 
This is the first episode where Janine wears a Ghostbusters jumpsuit and uses a proton pack for the first time, which is really exciting. She would later don a, I know, Peter's jumpsuit and a proton pack when all the boys get abducted Hmm. by Proteus. And I, I'm sure there are some other instances that other people can list. I don't have them right here on the top of my head, but uh, this is the first time we see that. So pretty cool there. I always liked seeing Janine in a jumpsuit Sexy. and with a proton pack. I kind of wish they had any pots, you know, put one on in the new movie. That would have been fun. Yeah, you like that? Please stop. Very naughty! <laughs> William E. Martin voiced the Sandman. He would also later voice Sam Hain. He would take over the voice of Shredder in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon from 1994 to 96 after James Avery from Fresh Prince of Bel-Air oh, right, right. as uh, the uncle. And he also, William E. Martin, co-wrote the screenplay for Harry and the Hendersons, hmm. which is a phenomenal 90s movie about Sasquatch being taken in by a family. I've never seen it. It's amazing. It is John Lithgow. I might make you watch it Not so we can do an episode oh on Seth's Watch. It's great. And I will reference this episode saying, remember? <laughs> All right. We're going to move on to the truth. Ooh. Much as you try to bury it, the truth is out there. Dun, dun, dun. I apologize if I mispronounce this. I've never heard this word. I, I'm only reading it. Ruum. It's R H E U M is a thin mucus discharged from the cornea, also called, and again, I apologize for this one, mucoprulent discharge, which dries, and that's what that actual sand around our eyes, what we what we call Crusty. sand. So yeah. It's... I don't call it sand. Who calls it sand? I got sand around my eyes. Who no, calls I, it? Who says that? You ever heard of eye boogies? Yeah. This is the same thing. Oh, I just say crusty. You okay. got crusties. I feel like crusties, I don't know, that makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> I don't like that. You got some crusties on your eye. Mm. (laughs) Sand on your eyes is much better. It's not as creepy. I don't like it. Anyway. So that's what it, scientifically, that's that's what it actually is. I talked a little bit about this. A ancient Greek god of sleep was Morpheus. If you know the term morphine, it comes from that that Greek god, Morpheus from the Matrix. Uh, And a new movie coming out. Oh, that's Morbius. Never mind. That is. A little different. (laughs) <laughs> uh, Morpheus in the Matrix awoke, you know, Neo. So he was a winged god of sleep. According to Ovid, he is one of the thousands of sons of Somnus, collectively known as Somnia. So when oh, you have, like insomnia? Yeah, that's where the term comes from, oh. is to not have sleep. Somnia were all the sons. Do so you have insomnia? I, I have insomnia. I need the Sandman to visit me more often. Bring me a dream. So really what we think of a lot when we think of the Sandman is Scandinavian folklore. So in that folklore, uh, the Sandman sprinkles dust or sand into the eyes of children so they will go to sleep. I imagine kind of like the Boogeyman, but, you know, less so. You had parents that were just wanting their kids to go to sleep. And maybe you had this branch of parents who were like, if you don't go to sleep, the Boogeyman's going to eat you. And then you had some like parents who were like, oh, the Sandman's going to put sleep in your eyes. Oh. But to me, like there is something, con- like there's a connective tissue. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like the Boogeyman and Sandman are both figures that like. Come at night. Come at night. Sleeping. They're believed by children. One's usually more malicious. The other is, uh, well, I'll tell you one that's, he's, he's not so kind of a Sandman. All right, spit it out. So. In 1816, author E.T.A. Huffman published The Sandman, and this figure is terrifying. So this is a description that is in the short story. He is a wicked man who comes to children when they won't go to bed and throws a handful of sand into their eyes so that they start out bleeding from their heads. Jesus! He puts their eyes in a bag and carries them to the crescent moon to feed his own children who sit in a nest up there. What the f***? They have crooked beaks like owls so they can pick up the eyes of naughty children. I don't like that at yeah. all. So, I mean, the, the short story is kind of about how this this child is, you know, maybe misremembering that this individual is this malicious Sandman. Mm-hmm. But I don't think other than this short story, there's a whole lot of, like, 
folk precedents of like a terrifying Sandman that rips eyes out and feeds them to his children in the moon. I don't like that. But I, I think that's awesome. No, that's terrifying. Yeah. You're never telling that to our kids. Wouldn't it be cool no. if the real Ghostbusters, he's like, I'm going to rip out your eyes now. I think that'd be a little too gory for the real they Ghostbusters. They had terrifying Boogeyman. Yeah, but he didn't rip someone's eyes out. He could have. Time to go Betty bye. A little bit more familiar story is Hans Christian Andersen who in 1841 wrote, and I apologize, I, I am American and I can't pronounce everything, Ol Lugoji? Lugoji? Luke Oji. Okay. I, I'm, sure I, I'm sure I butchered that and I apologize. His name is the Sandman. But Ol is a common Danish word, it's a, or a common first name, and Lugoji means close eyes. So he's, you know, he's like John, uh, well, John Close eye. Eyes. So he is described as wearing socks and throwing dust into children's eyes. Again, just the dust in the eyes. That's how you get sand in your eyes when you wake up. Because he throws it in your face. So you go to sleep. Go to sleep, go to sleep, go to go sleep. sleep. <laughs> so he throws just enough dust in their eyes so they don't see him. He then walks behind them and blows softly on their necks so that their heads droop. I hate that. <laughs> That's no, cre- it's it's not as creepy as old old no, bug eyes. I don't want old, anyone old... blowing on my neck. No, it droops their their head. Uh, he wears a coat with the color that changes from green to red, then red to blue as he moves. And under each arm, he has an umbrella. So for good children, he opens up one umbrella with pictures inside, so they dream of beautiful stories. For naughty children, the other umbrella is blank, so they sleep heavily through the night. So, oh, so he doesn't give them nightmares. No, no. I mean, this is this is kind of a you know a more benevolent Sandman, or just not a creepy cannibalistic one. In the story on Sunday night, Klaus Vach tells Hjalmar to look out the window, <laughs> uh, and the Sandman points out his brother, who is also called Klaus Vach, and he is riding a horse through the night sky. Whee. Klaus Vach tells Halmer that his brother is known as You're definitely not German. I well this is Danish first of all <laughs> and I'm not that either. So that's his brother, both named Klaus Vach. Okay. Do you know who his brother is? No. Death. So unlike his brother, Death only knows two stories and only visits people once in their life. He rides a horse in the sky? Klaus Vach <laughs> tells Halmer that if you lead a good life, you will hear Death's beautiful story. If not, you are told his horrifying tale. Jesus. Yeah. So, uh, again. My horn can pierce the sky. Why does, what? That's what came to my mind when okay. you said he was riding a horse in the sky. First of all, that's like a Barbie with a unicorn <laughs> horn. It's nothing. So, again, going back to that, the Sandman and the Grim Reaper are, are kind yeah. of connected. I, you know, again, I would argue that also Sandman Brothers. and... The boogeyman are kind of connected, so I, I find it interesting that, you know, you have a, a couple of folk stories mm. that all kind of bleed into each other. And, you know, one one more note that I have here that in Norway and Sweden, he is called John Blond, um, while in the Netherlands, Belgium, and parts of South Africa, he is called Klaus Vach, as mm. we talked about. Klaus Vach is said to live on the moon and float down with an umbrella he carries two as well. So again, you have, you know, some, some similar, similar tales ways, yeah. of the idea of the Sandman living on the moon, which I, I guess, you know, we associate the moon with sleeping or night. So yeah, maybe nighttime. that makes sense. I'm not really sure why the umbrella. I, I, I don't know why. Hmm. I'd be curious on it if anyone knew, like, why these folklore characters have an umbrella, let alone two. I mean, I get, like, he shows one, one to good. good kids, one to... Yeah, I get that. But I mean, like, why an umbrella? That's hmm. a... The pouch of sand makes sense to me. The umbrella, not so much. But, you know, some some descriptions, but I don't think that we, at least as Americans, tend to think of, like, when, again, so going back to, like, what do you think of when you when I say the Sandman, we don't pop into our head and go, oh, a guy with two umbrellas who lives on the moon and Puts feeds, sleep. feeds oh. his children Stop. eyeballs. Nope, we're done. <laughs> I wish. So, you know, I, I'd be curious what others think when when they hear of the Sandman, whether, you know, I, I have a very vivid idea of, like, what the Easter Bunny even looks like. You know, I have my own idea of what the Boogeyman looks like, but Sandman is always just kind of like this weird character to me. Hmm. But 
I think exists in kind of that similar childlike tooth fairy realm of like sort of real figures or, you know, so I, I guess, you know, it's hard to do. I want to believe believe. (laughs) because, you know, did you ever believe in the Sandman when you were a kid? Like, do you remember? I never even heard of it. Really? Yeah. Did you hear of the, I didn't hear about it until you were reading Neil Gaiman's book. So you never, like, you never even, like, knew about it when you were a kid? Mm -mm. Did you know of the Boogeyman? Yeah, of course. Tooth Fairy? Yeah. Easter Bunny? Yes. Santa Claus? Yes. Santa Claus? No. That's just sad. I know. (laughs) Uh, Okay, I mean, that's that's interesting. I feel like I knew of him, but didn't, Mm -hmm. like, unlike a lot of the, like, I believed in the Boogeyman. I believed in the Tooth Fairy. I believed in Leprechauns. But, like, the Sandman to me was like, no, that's ridiculous. Like, I never was like, oh, yeah, and there's a man who just enters my house and puts sand in my eyes, and that's fine. So I... I guess I can't really ask you that question of like, oh, did you believe this? Because you never even heard of it. I never believed in any of those things. No, didn't believe in the Tooth Fairy. I had a very messed up childhood. You had a man that threatened to eat your eyes and feed him to his children? Nope. <laughs> did Did anyone, you know, any, any of you listening, did you believe in the Sandman? Or was that kind of understood that like that was somewhere in the realm of like, we boogeyman. all kind of no. I, well, that's what I'm saying is for me as a child, I did believe in the boogeyman, but for me, the Sandman, I didn't. Like, I never thought of him as like could be a real hmm. creature. So I, I'd be curious on if anyone did, on what you thought of, if you have heard other stories. I really tried to see how many different cultures like had stories about him, but I, I couldn't find hmm. too much because it it is seems like it developed it's European specifically Scandinavian yeah. spread a little bit. And then, you know, I'm, I, I couldn't even find Where, really, when did it go to Africa? Like, I, what? Well, there's, there was Dutch colonization of oh, Africa. Right. Dutch. So it probably came with the Dutch if I had to guess, but you know, and then you've got all sorts of people who immigrated and emigrated to America. So mm-hmm. that's probably how it got up over here. But it's an interesting character that I, I'd be curious on what others thoughts are Yeah. on, you know, what people think of the Sandman episode and whether they agree with Heidi that it's only a three. Three sandbags. Three sandbags. <laughs> <laughs> if you were giving it stars, would you give it more stars? No. <laughs> so let us know your thoughts. No, what I, I was thinking of, you, did you ever watch the movie Constantine? No, but I know it. I feel like we could do an episode on, on not specifically Constantine, but maybe something from there. There was also, I, I kind of want to do an episode on the rumor or urban legend of walt disney's frozen head oh god it's a it's a long story but i think i have actually an episode of something that we could watch where we could talk about that because i myself want to dive into like where the hell that started and for the record we're ex-cast members so we we worked in walt disney world so like i remember like someone was like yeah it's apparent like we were in like the utilidors the tunnels underneath the magic kingdom and like someone was like and that's uh that's where walt's frozen head is no it's in california if it existed it would be i heard disney it was in, well th- and that's what i want to get into is okay. you know the different variations because i heard digress. it was i heard he was as uh, frozen head was in walt disney world so let us know if you'd be interested in some episodes about those you know we do try and vary it up not just do ghostbusters stuff for heidi's sake because clearly she doesn't have a high thought on the real ghostbusters but we we want to vary it up let us know if there's something that you think would be fun for us to cover and we might get to it but thank you so much for joining us mm-hmm. we hope you are having a a lovely spring it is technically spring right and it's gonna snow tomorrow and it's gonna snow tomorrow for us so maybe we'll we'll get better next time but for now we're pretty sleepy i think the sandman's gonna come visit us fond farewells fond farewells (laughs) that's it the end and see you later bye